first off, demonstrating fusion and if people really understand what fusion power offers to humanity. I think, number one, it, it enables you to throw out all of the axioms about uh, um, resource depletion, overpopulation, um, you know, limited, you know, limited resources, everything that goes along with this neo-Darwinian imperial way of thinking about economy and society. That with fusion, for example, we have a power source which is able to supply an abundance of energy to every human being on the planet, but at an order of magnitude above even what the highest you know, first world countries are, are consuming now. The National Ignition Facility is located at Lawrence Livermore National Labs in the Bay Area of California. And it's a football field sized facility and it houses 192 lasers. And these are UV range lasers, which are all directed in a certain configuration to all hit and go inside of this very small cylindrical device called a hole round. They go in there and they interact with the interior of this and they're then converted to x-rays. Those x-rays then all converge and impinge on a very small peppercorn-sized pellet, which has a certain um, ceramic around it. It's fro is brought down to very cool temperatures, you know, as close as they can get to near absolute zero temperatures. And within that is then deuterium and tritium, two isotopes of hydrogen. And the intention is to then use these lasers to drive an implosion of this small little pellet to ultimately produce a fusion reaction, to fuse these nuclei together, which releases abundant amounts of energy and potentially represents the next platform for mankind our, to meet all of our energy needs. So recently, there was um, a lot of press about a breakthrough that was achieved there. Um, actually, the breakthrough occurred towards the end of last year, in November of 2012. But um, Nature Magazine, you know, well-known magazine, just released a report which um, detailed exactly what the breakthrough was. And so that gained a lot of press just in the last couple of days. So what the breakthrough was is that they finally achieved a greater output of energy than the amount of energy that actually impinges on the fuel. So that does not mean that they got more energy out than the total amount of energy that goes into the whole process. Um, in fact, only about 1% of the energy that goes into the whole system, you know, into the lasers, and then a lot of the energy is lost when the lasers are converted to x-rays, only 1% of that total input actually then goes into driving the, the implosion. But they did achieve the fact that for the first time, the amount of energy they got out of the fusion reaction is more than the energy that went into uh, the implosion. So that was a real breakthrough. The other side, the other breakthrough of this was that they also found that they were getting an additional heating from the, um, the alpha particles that were being produced. So in the fusion process between the deuterium and tritium, one of the products is alpha particles, which are effectively the nuclei of, um, of helium. And so what they found is that these are then producing a, a heating effect of, of the fuel, which they want. Their, their thinking is about two times as much of the additional energy output that they got from their previous results are the effect of this alpha heating. So, and ultimately, whenever they go for, you know, when they get to the point where they're actually doing the real big shot, you know, when they've got the full fuel pellet and they're really going for the, the big shebang, they want a lot of the alpha particles to be doing the work for them to get, you know, full ignition. So that was the other side of it. They were very excited about the fact that they were able to demonstrate that alpha particles can play this very... Um, you know, this enhancing role in the process. A 
it shows us that there is a future which has more people operating at a more you know, effective, productive level with a higher standard of living, with a higher level of happiness and everything else, that that's achievable, that we're on a pathway towards that kind of future reality, and that is doable, right? That the, the creative powers of the human mind and the mind's ability to come ever closer to understanding the underlying principles of the universe and harnessing them and bringing them under the control of the noetic domain offers to mankind an ability to, to create these higher futures and that we're moving in that direction. You know, the potential is there despite the fact that the funding for these things is, is woefully deficient. I mean, the amount of funding that Fusion is getting is a fraction of what it actually demands to make that level of breakthrough. You know, that we're making these achievements despite the fact that, you know, the education system is in shambles. You know, despite the fact that the society and the culture is, is completely degenerate. But it also, you know, means that we have to, you know, we've got to take some immediate steps now to open up the door towards this next domain, towards this next phase of, of human, human evolution. Because, you know, we're never going to get to fusion if World War III takes off or if we allow the ideology of greenism to completely take over. You know, or we allow the effects of the collapse of the financial system to drag us into another dark age. So the reality is that we ha we're on a very short fuse towards total destruction for humanity, while at the same time we're also seeing some glimmering hope shining through that, hey, if we can overcome these, these deficiencies in, our, in our, human, our human condition right now and human relations right now, there is a very, very bright future.